Well, next year, New Yorkers head to the polls to pick a governor. Kathy Hochul is the incumbent. So New York City public advocate Jamani Williams now says he is forming an exploratory committee looking at a possible challenge to Hochul and the public advocate joining us now at the latest. Mr. Williams, good to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you, Dan Hazel. Always a pleasure. Thank so, you. So, Mr. Williams, I have asked you a number of times in recent interviews over and over again whether you were going to run for <laughs> governor. You were very coy with your answer. What made you decide now to form this exploratory committee? You know, it's been something we've been thinking about for, for quite some time, and it really uh, what began to tip me over uh, was the need to recover and renew New York uh, State uh, when we come through this pandemic. And it's really hard to do that if you don't change the infrastructure that allow the type of atmosphere, atmosphere we've seen for such a long time in Albany. Uh, uh, we felt it was important to be able to put forth a vision uh, based on what I've been trying to do uh, my entire career and having success at, which is pushing past inertia mm -hmm. to do what's best for the people of the city and the state. Well, Kelly Hochul has been New York's governor for about a month, and you seemed hopeful, very supportive when she took over. Has something changed? I mean, is it the Cuomo cloud that hovers over her right now? You know, you know, we would continue to say right now we're not running against anyone. We're, we're putting forth what we believe to be a good vision for the state. Um, I, I did run for lieutenant governor in 2018, and, and at that, that, that time uh, we said we need to have someone uh, that will stand up and be vocal against so many of the things that were going wrong that would harm uh, this uh, state. Um, and I believe if, you know, just we got a, just a couple more voters, we got really close. Uh, but uh, if, if we had one, we may not be in the situation uh, we're in now because we would have had someone there being more vocal. And that's not on any, on any one person. But again, there is a, a culture there uh, that's steeped in a lot of old ways of doing things. I think it's hard to renew unless you really shake that up in, in a very significant way. Right. You know, and, and, and just to be very direct here, usually you know, you know, you're exploring a run for governor, mm -hmm. right? Usually people do that when they aren't impressed or happy with the way things are going because they think they can do it better. You think you could do it better, right? So are you saying that you do not like the direction that New York's being taken in right now? What I'm saying is we're continuing what we have been doing for many years. And people look at our record. This is, this is nothing new. Uh, trying to really push past the toxicity, push past uh, the egos that prevent decisions from being made, push back from decisions made by what's politically convenient. That's all we've done in, in, in my political career and in my life, really, mm -hmm. with uh, some degree of success that we're very proud about. And what I'm saying is it's hard to make an Albany that works that way uh, if we don't change the infrastructure that's, that's there. Uh, and there was a political article this morning, actually, that was discussing the difficulty to change the muscle memory. And that's the conversation that we want to present to the, the, the state. I mean, obviously, obviously, it's still very early on, but we're also hearing rumblings that uh, Attorney General Tish James may also be running for governor. How does that affect you and, and your decision to continue in this race? I know your friends, I mean, your colleagues, um, but it may, some people are saying it may split that vote. Well, once again, we're not running against anyone. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, we're putting forward a vision for something. I have a great relationship with the Attorney General, and I tend to, to keep that. Uh, she's also doing a, a pretty good job, if you ask anyone uh, about that. So I'm part of the work she's doing as Attorney General. To my knowledge, she hasn't publicly mentioned uh, that she's uh, interested. Uh, what we're doing is putting forth uh, the vision that we think would be uh, well-suited to this state, and we're very much looking forward to that conversation, you know, applying lessons that we learned uh, when we did the exploratory committee uh, mm -hmm. just a few years ago. I know, I know. We're talking in hypotheticals here, right? Because <laughs> yeah, you're not necessarily course. a candidate just yet here. And it's a hypothetical with somebody like Tis James, somebody like Mayor de Blasio, who has been very coy about whether or not he will run as well. He says he's a progressive. You say you're a progressive. What would be your platform if you actually do become a candidate that you would bring from what you've experienced here in New York City to the rest of New York State? You know, people know the work that I've done uh, as an activist. They'll be uh, pleasantly surprised when they find out the work we've done uh, in legislative victories, in policy changes, in programmatic changes, getting funding to the right places that have had um, immense impact on the people of the city. We did that 
while taking the political risks uh, that other folks wouldn't take, while pushing past the inertia, while pushing past all of the noise. And that's a consistency that's needed. And I believe someone in Albany having that consistency and pushing our state forward at a time of renewal and recovery is really important. Mm -hmm. And that's the vision that we're putting forth now. So let's talk about, again, we're hypothetically speaking here, let's talk about how you would handle a couple of major local issues right now, um, particularly Rikers, you just visited recently, uh, Mayor de Blasio uh, finally visited this week. Some say it was a sugar sugar-coated visit, I guess you could say. The mayor and Governor Hochul, they've announced actions to try to address the situation. Do you think it's enough? What would you do? Well, one, uh, we I've been clear that I was severely disappointed that both the governor and the mayor uh, have not visited. I think that's one error right off the bat. Um, I wouldn't call the mayor's visit a visit. He could have done that from his office, mm -hmm. uh, going to Rikers and not speaking to anyone who detained there or anyone who works there, no correction officers. It's pretty much a waste of everyone's time. Uh, there is a lot more that can be done. Uh, we have to do some more to get uh, the services that are needed there. And we have to get some more people uh, off of uh, the island. And both of yeah. those things, it's some more that can be played out. We, we sent a letter to both the governor and the mayor asking them to join us and to ask for the federal government to provide more resources right. uh, so that folks can get what they need and keep people safe, both people detained and correction officers and staff. Right. You know, it, it's interesting if, if, as governor of New York, right, you represent so many different vast areas and what is felt in New York City isn't necessarily felt or agreed upon within the rest of the state as well. So when it comes to things like COVID, there's been a number of court rulings back and forth about vaccine mandates in the city, specifically for teachers, healthcare workers, right? And we see differing opinions depending on where you live in New York. What would you do as governor if you were governor in terms of a vaccine mandate in a classroom and around uh, in, uh, in other healthcare facilities as well? What I would say, first of all, upstate downstate divide is, is not as big as you think. Most of the issues that we're dealing with in New York City, they're dealing with in other places. And I learned that three years ago. Uh, when it comes to the vaccines, uh, the, both the mayor and the governor are right on the vaccine mandate issue. It's disappointing to see people who should be providing leadership um, pushing back. We should just treat the vaccines like we do all the others. There should be some exemptions, but not to the extent that people are pushing. What has been missing uh, is really getting into these communities uh, with the resources to get the word out. And I've asked both the mayor and the governor to just reconstitute uh, the, the, the structure we had for the census, which got to these same communities, pair those workers up with easily accessible people to give the shot right there, because we can get people to change their minds, right. but the time it takes for them to go get the shot sometimes it's too long. Why they haven't employed this uh, for so many months, I, I don't understand. All right, and I, I like what you said about the upstate downstate divide. Um, I just wanna ask you then, you know, what would you bring upstate from downstate in terms of food? Because sometimes you look at New York City as the food mecca of the world. You gotta bring some of that to the rest of the state. What would you bring? <laughs> You may want to ask the question all the other way around because I've, I've tasted some amazing food uh, from upstate as well. And so again, uh, you know, it's 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 the, I've had some of the most fun when I ran uh, for lieutenant governor just across the state. It is amazing. Uh, it's a fantastic place uh, that that many people, unfortunately, outside of the uh, inside of the city, may not have seen. But uh, we've we've been doing for the past few years, uh, you know, trying to combine yeah. uh, the powers that we have to push to Albany to do its best for all of us. All right. Thanks so much, Public Advocate Jumani Williams, for joining us this Thank morning. You. Always good to see you, and best was, of luck. I was looking for a food item, but it's okay. <laughs> I'll let you slide. All right. All right. Thank you.